Amen. Praise God. Welcome out to church. We can stand to our feet. We can get excited. Amen. Hallelujah. Yep. Why don't we stand, hop up to our feet, put our hands together, lift up our voices. Amen. What to say, Lord? What to say, Lord? It's you give me life and I can't explain just how much you mean to me now. That you have saved me, Lord. I give all I am to you. And every day I can be a light that shines your name. 
Oh, in every day, church. Every day, Lord, I learn to stand upon your word. And I pray that I, that I might come to know you more. You guide me in everything I have I taken. Every day I would be light to your word. It's you I live for every day. I follow after you every day. I walk with you, my Lord. Every day, Lord, I learn to stand upon your word. And I pray that I, that I might come to know you more. And you guide me with every single step I take there. Every day I can be a light to the world every day. It's you I live for every day. I follow after you every day. I walk with you, my Lord. Oh, it's you I live for. It's you I live for every day. It's you I live for every day. It's you I live for every day. Amen. Let's sing it together, church. Oh, it's you that I live for, Lord Jesus. It's you I live for every day. It's you I live for every day. It's you I live for every day. And every day, church. Every day. It's you I live for every day. I follow after you every day. I walk with you, my Lord. And every day, every day, it's you I live for every day. I follow after you every day. I'll be with you, my Lord. Amen. Praise God, church. Boasting his wisdom, or let the strong man boast in his strength. Let not the rich man boast in his wisdom, or let the humble to the one who made us, the one who saves us. I will boast in the Lord my God. I will boast in the one who is worthy. I will boast in the Lord my God. I will boast in the one who is worthy. He is worthy. Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, or let the strong man boast in his strength. Let not the rich man boast in his riches, but let the humble come and give thanks to the one who us, the one who saves us. I will boast in the Lord my God, I will boast in the one who is worthy, I will boast in the Lord my God, I will boast in the one who is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Amen. Let's keep that clap going. We're not done. Almost had you. All together, church. I'll make my boast in Christ Jesus. And I will make my boast in Christ alone. Alone. Yes, I will make my boast in Christ alone. That's the way. That's the spirit, church. Lift your voice. I will make my boast in Christ alone. Alone. 
Yes, I will make my post in cross the line. All right, if you can, let's doll it up. I will make my post in cross the line. Hello. And I will make my bones in Christ alone. One more time. And I will make my bones in Christ alone. Alone. I will make my bones in Christ alone. I will make. I will boast in the Lord my God. I will boast in the one who is worthy. I will boast in the Lord my God. I will boast in the one who is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Amen. Hallelujah. He most certainly is, church. the church and Jesus who died is now glorified Jesus who died is now glorified and Jesus who died is now glorified is the king of all kings amen the majesty of Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior this morning church is something to be in awe and marvelous wonder of. That God would send His only begotten Son for guilty sinners, you and I. We had broken the commandments of God. We had violated our own conscience. Conscience meaning to be with knowledge. We've done things that are wrong. What the Bible says is that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I want to encourage you this morning. We're seeking after His glory, His kingdom, because we have been saved and redeemed, not by the blood of bulls and rams and goats and offerings, but God has made a peace offering by giving His Son, Jesus, that whosoever should believe in Him shall have eternal life. It's how much He loves you. You need to understand the love of God for your life and be encouraged by it this morning. Why don't we sing to Him one final song, at the cross because that's where it all happened Jesus came and loved me took my sin to Calvary he has made a way for me now 
my eyes are open since I came to know him. His great love has set me free. At the cross, my debt was paid, and all my sins were washed away just for me. Amazing grace at the cross, at the cross, my Savior died, He shed His blood, was crucified just for me, He gave me Jesus came and loved me, took my sin to Calvary. He has made a way for me. And now my eyes are open since I came to know Him. His great love has set me free at the cross. My debt was paid, and all my sins were washed away. And just for me, amazing grace had cross, and at the cross, my Savior died. Shed his blood was crucified, and just for me, he gave his life at the cross. Oh, my joy, my joy will ever be in the one who saved me, Jesus. Oh, praises to the King For His grace and mercy I have been redeemed Oh, my joy will ever be In the One who saved me Jesus, Lamb of Calvary Oh, praises to the King For His grace and mercy I have been redeemed At the cross My debt was paid And all my sins Were washed away And just for me Amazing grace at the cross And at the cross my Savior died He shed His blood, was crucified And just for me He gave His life at the cross amen hallelujah oh the cross of calvary the salvation of god through his son jesus the words of jesus i am the way the truth and the life no one shall come to the father except through me hallelujah why don't we give him worship this morning and praise this morning oh father we thank you god oh we want to worship you we want to glorify Jesus this morning, saints. We want to lift up a couple of needs. We want to lift up our brother D2, amen. We also want to lift up those who are not here, and especially those who are who had gave their lives to Jesus Christ during last week, amen, uh, during the revival services, amen. We want to come uh, before God and pray for these people. We also want to pray for our church, of course, uh, those who are not here, but also those who are here. 
Maybe you're going through something. Maybe you've got a health issue. Maybe you've got a mental issue. Maybe you've got a relational issue. Maybe a financial issue. Can I tell you that God can help? God can get involved in your life. Do we agree with that? Amen. Let's pray right now and ask God to help us. uh, And I'll open us up in prayer. Father, we come before the Almighty God. Father, we pray by the blood of Jesus. Help us, oh God. Show us, help us, God. Father, in our churches, move in our cities, move in our nations, move in our, Father, congregation. Oh, Father, we need, oh God, to bring back the converts. God, the new believers, oh God, those, oh God, you've been recently saved. God, I pray that you pour out your spirit, pour out your ways. Oh God, let the need, oh God, let the outpouring, let the favor of the Lord. Oh Father, I pray. us, God. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the glory of our King and we pray that you would speak to us this morning. Move by your Spirit. Convict our hearts. Store us, God, for revival. Oh, Father, let your glory manifest this morning, God. And we pray these things in Jesus' my name. All God's people said, Amen. Let's welcome each other this morning, saints. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's make sure it's on cool, Brendan. Amen. Glory to God. Welcome out to the Potter's House here in the Inner West. Sir. And for those who are visiting us for the first time, God bless you and welcome, amen, to the Potter's House here. We meet here every Sunday morning, of course, at 10.30 and at 6 p.m. And so for all the saints, um, uh, you know where we are. We also meet on Wednesday at 7.30 here Amen. So um, a few up and coming events, amen, for the saints. Uh, so on Friday, the men's discipleship uh, will be on uh, at Parramatta with evangelist uh, Steve Bowman. Uh, we just had him for revival, as you know. He's in currently preaching in Hurstville, and he's going to move on to Parramatta from Monday onwards. And so I just encourage you to, uh, all the men, to gather yourselves uh, and make, out, uh, make yourselves available for that. Uh, and you're going to uh, enjoy a wonderful time of ministry Amen. So I just encourage you to make it out on the 19th of April, 7.30 in Parramatta on the Friday. And then, of course, on the 18th of, um, of April, we'll be outreaching on Thursday at 7 p.m. Uh, Stephen will be taking uh, courage of that. So uh, just let Stephen know if you're coming and, and he will follow up accordingly. And so we'll be heading to Burwood, the usual place outside the United Church we'll be meeting. Uh, let's go and win some souls. We've had some fruit late, lately, amen, in the various areas. And uh, I think some of the saints have been witnessing a storm. And so let's continue to do that uh, and believe for souls, amen. Our attitude uh, uh, creates an atmosphere of expectancy. And so as you do that, uh, we will expect souls to come accordingly, amen. And then the adult, uh, so the women's Bible study will be on the 28th of April. So all the ladies, uh, 4 p.m. here in the building. Uh, Donna will be running that accordingly, and so make yourselves available for that. I believe all the ladies are enjoying that, uh, so we're going to keep that going for uh, the period of time that we have right now. Amen. 
That's it. Let's give God a cup offering as the ushers come up to take the offering. Amen. Uh, just before I um, take the offering, um, I want us to continue to pray this week for all those uh, people who uh, and their families who've been affected by uh, the murders in uh, Bondi Junction, in particular Westfields. Uh, seven people, I believe, are dead now because of that, and, and eight, uh, including the, the perpetrator who, who did those horrendous acts. Um, and it really draws to our attention how close uh, death is at our door sometimes. So this is in our own city. And I'm not saying that uh, we, we take this lightly, but uh, people don't know, you know how close death is sometimes uh, and, and how quickly it can come. No one there thought that they were going to die that day shopping in a Westfield centre. Amen. Uh, and also just recently this morning, uh, some of you may, heard, may have heard, uh, Iran just started to bomb Israel, launched uh, 200 plus bombs uh, drone bombs into Israel. Uh, now the allied forces are coming together trying to, uh, you know, trying to sort that out. But uh, we're on the brink of war. Uh, and um, in the, uh, last night in my house around the corner, people are having parties till about 11 o'clock, tw- so 1 o'clock in the morning, singing happy birthday you know, as if nothing's going on. People are dying. And I'm not saying that you should stop celebrating, but I'm just saying we have to be very s- sober with what's going on. And I say that because the church needs to rise up. The church needs to stand up, preach the gospel because uh, our Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back. And we don't want people that we love, that we care about, uh, not to know him, not to make heaven their home. So let's continue to give into the offering. Let's continue to pledge uh, those uh, uh, things that we've uh, pledged to and, make, uh, and honor that so that we can continue to propagate the word of God and make the church available. And if you heard what Pastor said uh, during the week, uh, Pastor Steve Bowman, he believes this is going to be a candlestick church. And I, I take that word seriously. Uh, I, take it to, uh, I take it as confirmation that we will plant workers out of this church and one day we will touch nations uh, and we'll build a, a wonderful church and congregation here that will be a church planting center. I want you to start to believe that, pray for that. And as we do that together, let's give and may God bless you. Amen. Brendan, let's pray with the gift and giver, please. Amen. God bless you for your... Sit the captives, send the liars, send the prisoners free. We're calling them fire. We're calling them fire. We're calling them fire. From hell. service team. Amen. For those who are visiting us, uh, welcome. Tremendously welcome. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. And so if you need some help, uh, the bathrooms are at the back there. Uh, just to give you some direction, the kitchen's on the right as well at the back. And so if you need to use any of those facilities, feel free to uh, uh, use them. And if you need any help, there'll be an usher at the back to help facilitate that. Amen. We're going to get into the Word of God uh, this morning. Acts chapter 8, verses 4 to 8. Acts chapter 8, verses 4 to 8. Amen. And we've called this... Uh, did you do a slide? Amen. We, we, we've called this sermon, uh, Keeping It Going. Amen. And uh, it's rightly so that we've just finished revival on Wednesday. Amen. Some of you may be exhausted uh, from the fact that um, so many activities have been happening, so many services. But let me tell you, our physical bodies may be tired, but our, phys- our spiritual bodies are refreshed. Amen. And so I continue to ask you to persevere. And this is where you get stretched. This is where you're going to grow. Amen. But before we get into that particular uh, uh, chapter or scripture, some of you who know Smith and Smigglesworth, amen, Wigglesworth, a powerful preacher during the 1800s. Uh, I'm currently reading a book as well about him. He was used powerfully by God. The book that I'm reading said that his shadow would also heal people. 
He would preach so well that many would come to Christ and many would give their lives to Jesus and instantly surrender their hearts. But did you know that Wigglesworth founded no movement? He offered no books, although there are two published in his name, supposedly. And he also had no official disciples. No doctrine or no theology college bears his name. He established but one church whose final manifestation was the Boland Street Mission. But when that ceased to exist as an independent entity in 1919, sadly to say, nothing else existed afterwards. The sad thing about what I've just said is uh, that there were no disciples made throughout his ministry. The one church that he started did not make it. So we're going to read the text now. But can I say to you, as we read the text, see what you see and let God reveal to you right now what He wants. Can I just pray? Father, we pray that as we go through Your Word this morning, help us, God. Let us discover, God, the revelation and the refreshing of Your Holy Spirit. Let us be taught well, God, but also, God, spiritually grown. Father, stretched into the image of Your Son. And Lord, Father, convict us to the heart. But also, God, strengthen us to serve You and bless us as we obey in Jesus' name. Amen. Acts chapter 8, verses 4 to 8 says here, Therefore, for those who were scattered and went everywhere preaching the word, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them, and the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed. And many who were paralyzed, lamed, were healed. And there was a great joy in that city. Amen. What you read from the text and what we get from the text here is that there were disciples. And these disciples were going out to preach. You don't have to be a pastor to preach the gospel. You can be a disciple who wants to spread the good news of Christ. That means that's all of you. And so further on from the revival services that we've just had, the continuation of revival needs to flow. What you've experienced must not stop, but it must continue. So we as a congregation have to make a choice now. Are we going to keep it going? It was said that there were many admirers on the edge, on the fringe of what was happening in the book of Acts. But no momentum to bring others to keep it going at some stages. But there was a man called Philip. He was a disciple. He started to preach. Because revival has purposes. We just came out of this wonderful revival. I believe probably one of the best revivals I've experienced. And just to let you know, I have rebooked him. But his calendar is shocking. So we may have to wait a little bit longer than we expect. We have revival for a purpose. They are meant to do certain things. Many times we go into these revival experiences with different agendas, maybe even different needs and and different Ideas. 
Some may come in tired, discouraged, needing direction, needing to hear from God, wanting God to move in a particular situation. Now, after revival, many times, many people become encouraged. I am encouraged. I'm stirred from what I've heard from God. I'm refreshed. I'm convicted. I'm pushed. I'm challenged. And of course, I've been touched by God. This is because, uh, this is what should happen during a revival. Even this Sunday, you should be touched by God. We should see God to move. We should hear from God. Revival can help people who need to hear from God, to see God move in their lives. In our text, we get a picture of a city. This city is called a city of strongholds. Samaria is not where normally Jews go. It's a foreign area. Jews are not welcome there normally. But the city is hurting. There are hurting people in our city. We've seen that. I was witnessing on Saturday with the impact team. I met a young man in his mid-30s. He's in a wheelchair. I said to him, how are you going? He goes, not that great. He's there with his son, who's about Enoch's age. And I said to him, what happened to you? He goes, I was riding my motorbike. I had a major accident. I hit my spine and now my legs don't work. And through that injury, he's lost his job. He's lost his marriage and he's lost hope. This is a hurting world out there. And I'm trying to give him the hope of Christ saying, you know, you are alive for a reason. If God wanted to take you, you would have died at that accident. Look at your son. He still needs a father. Why have you given up on life? He goes, because I have nothing left. It's sad to say that a man who loses his mobility suddenly thinks life is not worth it anymore. Well, we see other people who have no mobility, continue to strive, make disciples like Pastor Warner and plant churches around the world. This city is a mess. Just look what happened yesterday at Bondi. It's a mess. Many people who were not well are now living with hope potentially from the revival services. This can be seen in the inner west. We know we have a drug problem. We know we have gang problems. We know we have suicidal problems, depression. We have all these stresses upon life. Now there's financial issues with just the cost of living and housing. People can't even get a place to live. So many are living without any hope. But then there are also the Christians who need to see revival to continue in their lives. We're not prone and immune to what the world inflicts. But as Christians, we have Jesus Christ as our victory. We could have had more extra services. You could have gone to Hurstville if you were keen. You may go to Parramatta next week. And this allows God to continue to move after it's over. But it should be lasting. You know, if you got prayed for and you got healed, He called out some specific sicknesses. I believe you are healed. You need to remain in your healing. If salvation came to people who were your friends, follow them up. Salvation should remain. 
Don't just go, oh yeah, they're done. That's it. They pray the prayer. Hopefully I'll see them in heaven. No, they need your help. Spiritual growth, even for us, even as your pastor, I'm contending to grow. We need to maintain our relationships with each other and the unity that pastor preach about. And also, our minds need help. In the text, there is a direct result of the revival that they've just had. Prior to this, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit had saved 3,000 as Peter preached. The lame started to get healed and then another 5,000 started to serve and disciples were being raised up. This is happening because God's people want to do greater things than what they've just experienced in the last few days. Philip saw what God can do, and so he made it a point. And what was his point? To go and preach the gospel. What did you do after the revival? Did you just say, oh, that was great, and chilled out? Or did you go, you know what, I'm stirred. You know, I was so stirred, I started to witness to people. People that I just met. I just witnessed to a guy this morning who was fixing the truck next door. Hi, how are you? Gave him the gospel message, gave the church card. You're welcome here. In my mind and in my heart, just like Philip, I want the momentum to keep going and not stop. Can you stay in that momentum? Don't go back to where you were. The revival that we've just experienced is to be continued in our lives. So Philip goes into Samaria, he preaches Jesus, and the city receives it. The Christ that he knows is received into a city that no one would normally go to to preach the gospel. But can I tell you, there is always opposition to the momentum of God. You know, you would expect this morning the house of God would be full. There were people who had come every single service. You would think they'd be busting through the doors, going, Woo! I'm ready for some more church. I've had a bit of a sleep on Thursday and Friday. And Saturday, maybe I did the laundry. I washed my clothes. I'm fresh now. I'm ready to come. Banging on the doors. The visitors, the ones who were saved, should be roaring through the corridor saying, God, give me some more of this. But naturally, there is opposition. When David became king, the Philistines came up against him in Chronicles chapter 14, verse 8. And when the Philistines heard that David was anointed king over Israel, the Philistines went up to seek David. The devil is after our converts. The devil is after the revivals, services, and the momentum that we have. When Jesus was there, the, the Pharisees opposed him. They opposed what he was doing, what he was preaching. Even they were opposing healings and miracles. Strange, isn't it? Religious people opposing miracles. Matthew chapter 22, verse 15. Then the Pharisees met together to plot how to trap Jesus into saying something for which he could be arrested. Can I say to you? When there is opposition, means that there is revival happening. Because sometimes we think about the opposition and, and that's it. Now, let me tell you, the reason there is opposition is because revival is happening. Momentum is happening. At this time, when God is doing a great work, we must oppose the opposition, but we must also contend. The church is under attack and people are thrown into jail in the book of Acts chapter 1. At that time, a great persecution rose against the church, which was in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. The reason they were persecuted allowed the gospel to be spread. 
Persecution is bad. Yes, I understand if you're experiencing, but persecution is also what God used to spread the gospel beyond Jerusalem. If you feel an assault now, that's natural. You just say, thank you, Jesus. God is stirring the hornet's nest. I might have to just branch myself a bit thinner around this city a bit more. And I might have to start to preach even more. I might have to witness even more. I might have to pray even more. might contend some more. And you know what? I'm going to reach out some more. It's obvious the devil is against this. The devil wants to fight everything that's against God. Hell will try to divide the people to rip off our new converts, to assault the saints, to assault the church. But when it's all there and done and dusted, let me tell you, Jesus Christ is still on the throne. It may cause some to give up. It may cause some to quit. But let me tell you, it cannot stop revival when God is moving. Can you recognize this? Can you see the attacks happening So we must continue to maintain momentum. There are also a number of things we can do to oppose what is happening. You know, we can be stirred by the revival, but if we sit at home and fail to act, imagine Philip for a minute. If he just sat at home, the city of Samaria would have never heard the gospel. When we fail to act, to act, the revival will never continue. It's not the devil now, is it? It's the people. Notice that. The people stop revival, not the devil. So in other words, you might have to abandon your status quo, abandon that little part of your life that you've just gotten used to where God doesn't move. Or you know, abandon your portion in life where you go, oh, I've prayed with people, but no one got saved. Well, now the momentum is happening. Start to contend and seek those who can be saved. Some of you may know a young gentleman by the name of Ron who used to come here. Well, I met Maria on the bus, same bus, going home. Hello, pastor. Can you please reach out to Ron? This is his number. Make sure he goes to church. The one that opposed them from going to church has passed away. Now the gospel is open to that family again. This God is doing something. That's straight after revival. We are the body of Christ and every person is vital and extremely important to keep this going. We must not stay on the fringes, but we must get into the trenches and start pursuing, taking the land. Revival momentum will continue when we gather together and seek. You know, the next uh, outreach, we should gather together and do what we need to do. Support Stephen in that outreach. Refuse uh, to let the devil take away what we need to do. To lose momentum is to start to miss services, of course. To miss outreach uh, or neglect them. uh, to stop giving, and even worse, to stop praying. So we now must take personal responsibility here. Can you do that? Personal responsibility for your own life, but personal responsibility for the revival to continue. I'm trying my best, church. Can you help me? Can you support me? in this endeavor for the kingdom. Can I say, some of us might feel disqualified. But pastor, 
I'm not really good at outreaching. Well, keep coming and you'll get better. Pastor, I don't read my Bible that often. Well, start. I heard of a new podcast series of a man. He's 35 years old and he can't read. He's illiterate. In America, the schooling system there is so horrendous that he somehow got away with not being able to read when he graduated high school. All his life, he's been covering up. So if he wanted to go somewhere, he can't read a map. He can't read the train stations. You know, nothing. It takes him three days in preparation just to go from one destination to another destination. His whole life was like that until he admitted, this is my responsibility. I need to fix this issue. I cannot read and it's my responsibility to work out how to read. And so he started to try to read by reading quotes, learning how to sound out letters. And he went on a podcast and one of his you know, social media channels goes, I can't read, but I want you to join me on how I'm learning. He's got 300,000 followers now. Most of them saying, I can't read either. But you've inspired me now to read. In other words, we are responsible for the revival that God's given us. Ultimately, if we don't go and preach, our city might never be reached. We might never grow also. We might not stretch and hell wants this to happen to us. God wants the church to prosper, to grow, new converts, new purposes, new inner outreaches, new excitement, new relationships. But the devil wants to stop all that. So how do we keep this going? Make it personal. Every single one of us here needs to make it personal. You know, virtually all of you got a word, I believe. Or got prayed for at least. That was God strategically targeting you. He gave you His Spirit. And what that means is, it's your obligation now to do something with it. And what did Philip do? He decided nothing's going to stop him. Yes, they've shut down the church in the book of Acts. They've been persecuted. But you know what? I'm going still. I'm going to the next neighborhood, the next city, and I'm going to preach the word of God to Samaria. And he preached to Christ to them. And because evangelists may be gone, it doesn't mean the revival services have to go with him or needs to pause. We can make a choice this morning. We can make practical choices as well to enable things to happen. What are these practical things? Maintain a healthy relationship with God. Maintain that. The downfall of revival services ending is because people stop having a healthy relationship with God. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to 12. Two are better than one. Amen to that. Because they have, got, they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls. For he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. In other words, Christians have to stay together, stay close to one another, help one another, stay on track. Keep everyone stirred. Can I say to you, when you remove a coal out of a fire, it dies if it's alone. But you put them back with coals, with other hot 
fiery people, uh, let me tell you the excitement and the fire burns are even brighter, even in the coal that was dead. Cultivate a relationship now with your headship even more. Cultivate a relationship with each other. Stir each other. What are you reading, sister? What Bible verses have provoked you? What has God told you to do? Who have you witnessed to? You know when I'm giving you accounts of who I'm witnessing to and what God is doing, I'm saying that can happen to you. Or you can do it too. It's not by accident that your pastor is getting these experiences. Because in my heart and in my mind, revival has just started. Momentum is moving. Things are happening. And of course, maintain your relationship with God. Help those who are struggling. Sow the word into them. Go and visit them. Bring them a, you know, a dish. Hi, I'm just here. Hello. Why are you here? Oh, I just bought some muffins for you. I've just brought uh, a meal for you. I bought a tea bag. You got some hot water? We have to stay in our place of where God has planted us. That means we start to welcome more people to church to give more to the kingdom, to pray more. Yeah, you look around, there are people who are not here. What's the aim this afternoon? Don't say lunch. But say, yeah, you know what? I'm going to call up Peter. I'm going to call up Jaden. I'm going to call up a few folks who are not here tonight who got saved. And even the regular folks, who, where are they? Besides some are working, maybe some are not well, but where are they, God? We need to continue to minister. We've got to make ourselves available. Now Philip went, and that's when the supernatural happened. Imagine that. One guy preached the word of God and the whole city came to Christ. It's like you now going to Stratfield, preaching on the streets at the boulevard area, and the whole of Stratfield got saved. That's what the scripture is saying. Philip was not a preacher until he felt stirred to preach. Philip was not an evangelist. He was just a normal disciple at that stage. <coughs> the book of Acts chap chapter 8, verses 6 to 7. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. Think about that for a minute. It's a supernatural arrangement. Philip stepped out and with that supernatural arrangement, he saw miracles. Do you need a miracle? Are you happy the way your life is right now? Do you need a supernatural encounter with God? The Bible says the lame started to walk. The paralyzed got healed. This is remarkable. There are people right now who you know who are in desperate need of you preaching the gospel to them. Every person here can be used by God. It's only up to us to step out and making ourselves available. 
God is simply looking for a people who will be partners with Him to allow Him to reveal the momentum of revival, to continue this through their lives. Revival is not in just the church meetings. Revival is in us. I've heard of one man getting saved and by that one person getting saved brought 35 people to the next church service. That could be you. I believe that. You could witness to one person and you could cause an explosion or explosive revival here. Can I tell you, it's happened to me. I was a disciple in the church. I witnessed to one drug addict in Cabramatta. Shaved head, looked like a thug. He was going to bash me. He gave his life to Jesus Christ. And within the next few days, I was at his house. And Donna and I prayed with 38 people in one night. wasn't because I was so special. It's because that one person knew so many people who needed Jesus. I was just faithful to go and witness. And I'll be very honest with you. I actually didn't want to witness to him. I saw him and God prompted me at outreach. He says, go and talk to him. I said, I don't want to talk to this guy. He looks like a thug. I've never taken drugs. I've never been in the gang. I'm a good boy. Supposedly, you know. Of course, of my own little sin. But when I witnessed to him, he instantly gave his life to Christ. That could be you witnessing to the next person. I didn't do anything special. All I did was obey. All I did was surrender. All I did was say, God, use me. And even when I didn't want to be used, I obeyed. You may sit here and go, yeah, but I've never done anything like that. Well, nor did I (laughs) until that day. But can I say to you, our fellowship has been birthed out of people who will reach those who the world says are unreachable. But because these people obeyed, just like our pastor all those years ago, when the Jesus movement happened, and he preached the Word of God to the Jesus movement, all these souls were saved and locked into our church. You know, we're a church of over 3,500. It started with one man obeying God. It started with one man witnessing God. To the hippies. And lastly, from all the news that we're hearing this week, in the last day, literally, isn't it critical now that we partner up with God? Isn't it critical now that we do something for Him? And push this along. Can you agree with me on that? Can you say to God, I'm ready. I'm ready, God. Give me just, give me the opportunity. Let me step out now. I'm going to obey. I'm going to surrender. I'm going to decide. And I'm going to keep it going. Can we agree that this morning? Amen. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes for a minute. Amen. God is here with us. God is wanting His people to keep it going. By Your Spirit, Lord, touch these people right now. Touch this church. Father, we break the opposition. We break the strongholds of the enemy that tries to stop this momentum. God, we need a spirit that wants to conquer, 
a spirit God that wants the victory of Christ. And we know this God through those who are not here. But we also know God that we know that there are many out there who will be saved. Jesus, you're on the throne. Maybe you're here this morning. And you're just really fed up with what the devil continues to do with your life. I sense it right now. It's like you're going in circles. Nothing changes. Over and over again, I'm, I'm just going back. It's like a dog eating its vomit. Are you tired of that? Are you tired of letting the devil just continue to bombard you with assaults when you're trying to make some traction? Can I tell you, the devil has no right. Do you want to be set free of that? But setting free of that means you've got to actually want to commit to Christ. You know, Jesus went all the way. After they beat him, after they mocked him, after they whipped him and scorned him, where every bit of his skin was torn off his body, he just said, I'm still going. And then he took the cross and then walked up the hill all the way to Calvary. Mount Gotha was there and he knew where he was going, but he still kept walking. He didn't stop. Our Lord didn't stop for you. Why would you stop now? As they nailed Him one nail at a time, one in His right hand, one in His left hand, He didn't say stop. He kept going. And even as they raised Him up, hung on that bloody tree. He never said stop. He kept going. And as He looked down at the crowd, He finally said, it's done. Everything that I was created for on this earth, the 33 years that He walked on earth, came to that point where He finished. He hit the finish line. He drew all the momentum of His life to get there. He never gave up on us. He never gave up on you. If you want that Jesus to forgive you right now, wash your sins away. Wash the hopelessness and give you life abundantly. The purpose-filled life a life that He says that is up to the brim and overflowing. You want to make Him your Lord and your Savior right now. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand right now. Don't be shy. And those who are watching online, lift up your hands. I need Jesus right now. God, I need Jesus. I'm not going to give up. I want you, Jesus, right now. Lift up your hands. Yes. Amen. Hands lifting up. Yes, I see that. Yes, come on. Those who are watching, those who are here, I know there's more. I know God is prompting your heart. What do you have to lose? We must not stay in the ditch. We must not take ourselves and put ourselves in the cave. But we need to come out of the darkness into the light. Like He says, it's our actions that are needed. Lift up your hands right now. That's me, Pastor. You're talking to me. I can feel the conviction of God. I feel the stirring of the Almighty. 
Those who are watching online, a simple prayer is going to come up on your screen. Mean it with your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to open the altars right now. I want you to make some promises to God. I want to keep it going. If you lift up your hands, I want you to come out as well. And I'll pray with you. The altars are going, saints. Come on, come out and pray right now. God, I'm committed to this. I'm going to keep it going right now. It's not a place where I want to be, where I'm just going to be stagnant still. But God, I want you to move. I'm going to commit to this. I want the momentum of the Lord to continue to move powerfully in the name of Jesus. Oh, I pray, Lord. I pray over my sister right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray the blood of Jesus. Oh, as she gives her life to you, as she confesses, oh God, the power of the Holy Spirit to come and fill her. Holy, holy God. Shana moku, shana mama. Holy, holy. Wash away her sins. Wash away, God, every doubt, every infirmity. Bring miracles. Bring signs and wonders. Oh God, supernatural God, move right now in the name of Jesus. Heaven is going to be your home, sister. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Almighty God. Oh, Father, we praise you, God. How ironic is this, that our fellowship was birthed out of the Jesus people movement. Movement is within our fellowship. You know, April is already halfway through. A couple more months and it's halfway through the year. 2024, just like that, halfway gone. What are we waiting for, saints? Can you take some flies this afternoon? Witness to your neighbour. Witness at the restaurant. Witness wherever you can. I permanently have cards in my pocket, in my wallet. Because I see opportunities where God can give us momentum. I'm tired of just being being something that's not what God wants me to be. I want to be fruitful. Father, I need your spirit to move right now in the saints. Those who are watching online, those who are here. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. That you will supernaturally move. Let the glory of our God touch this city. Touch our lives. Let the momentum, let the wheels that you've put in motion and the fire that you have lit burn brighter, stronger. And with more, Father, abundance. I pray in the name of Jesus, help us, oh God, right now. Bless us, God, as we go. And I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. All God's people said, Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon. And we'll see you this evening. Five o'clock for prayer and six o'clock for service. God bless you. Amen.